So one of the questions a lot of people hit me with all the time, actually, is should I buy a Mac or a PC? I'm thinking about upgrading my computer and I'm frustrated with Windows. Uh, you know, fight with it all the time. And everybody that has a PC, I mean a Mac, uh, you know, seems to have a lot less problems than I do and just wonder uh, if I should consider switching to a Mac. And it seems like this is kind of a never-ending question, never-ending debate. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of different perspectives on the topic. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm going to ramble a little bit probably about some things you may not want to <laughs> endure in this video. And uh, sometimes I'm not the best person to ask for advice on a particular product to buy because if I haven't touched it and used it myself, it's hard for me to give a good perspective and a good review or advice on something. And I have to revert to uh, what I know, my experience, uh, specifications, things like that, and just give you the best advice that I can. However, I will say, um, you know, and I'll also preface this video with telling you, I'm a Microsoft guy. I cut my teeth on Microsoft. I've been doing IT for over 22 years and I uh, was one of the first quarter million people certified by Microsoft and uh, so that goes back a long ways and a lot of experience uh, a lot of work in businesses specifically mostly small and medium businesses where uh, my job was to make applications and software run well for those businesses so did a little research the other day on the companies just to see where they're at today and Microsoft is one of the most profitable companies in the United States in, uh, in the world and uh, you know they're they're solid. They're going to be around. People think they're dying off or something for some reason, but they're not. They run corporate America, and that's a fact. Okay. So when I did some comparisons, uh, you know, looked at the annual revenues in 2014, uh, Microsoft. Uh, I think their revenues were about 86 billion dollars, and then uh, so I looked at Google. Google's about 66 billion, and what was impressive about Google was the year before they were a 38 billion dollar company I believe so they gained uh, you know almost 30 billion dollars in, in a year and like 97 98 percent of their revenue is generated by advertising through YouTube and AdWords things like that and uh, it's all done with people volunteer you know voluntarily giving them money without contracts, they have control over it, things like that. And that's one of the things that frustrates the government is they can't go after Google for antitrust because they're not forcing anyone to pay them for anything. So it, it's it's really interesting, it, it's just a different business model than the other companies. So Microsoft 86 billion, Google 66 billion, these are rough numbers and pretty close. Um, and Apple, I look up, and they are a $182 billion company last year and that just blew me away. I knew it was more than the others. I didn't think it was going to be that much more. I mean, it's more than micro I mean, it's more than double uh, Microsoft, uh, you know, certainly more than Microsoft and Google combined. And uh, that's an impressive number. Now, the other side of that is uh, you know, this year their sales aren't meeting projections, so they're going to be down quite a bit from uh, where they were supposed to be. I think they announced the other day that they're going to be in the red the rest of the year. And so, you know, once you reach a you know, point where you're the world's most valuable company and you've reached your market cap, you are, you're worth more and doing more business than anyone else, in a way there's only one place to go and that's down. So you know where that's going to go in the future I don't know. What I will say is that uh, 10, 12 years ago I, said, I made the prediction that uh, in 10 or 12 years operating systems would start to converge and it wouldn't matter a lot which computer you had and we're not quite there but we're pretty close you can already do a lot of things cross-platform much of the software that's out there is available on every platform you know Windows and Mac and even Linux and some other things and so those things are uh, happening not as fast as I thought they would but they're they're happening and so when it comes to buying a uh, Mac or a PC um, you have to weigh in a few things. Um, you know, when I look at market share, you know, Macs are still only like five or eight percent of the computers that are in use in the world, and uh, Windows is like ninety percent, and then the rest are spread among other little different things, operating systems and things. And so uh, that you know, 
in one way tells you that there are so many more Windows users out there to help you if you have a problem and there's so much more support available for it. Now, the other side of that coin is that right now Mac is like number three or four in shipping computers. So they have taken over that spot and in the next several years they will gain substantial market share as those older Windows computers drop off the planet uh, you know the Windows XP machines that have been out there for 13 14 years and those you know are retired from use and they die off and as we move forward uh, a lot of computers are going to be replaced with Macs and they'll gain a quicker market share so you'll probably see in the next um, uh, five years or so, they'll climb to you know maybe 15% market share, something like that. Uh, maybe more, maybe less. I, I don't know. I'm just you know taking a, a wild stab at that. But uh, the other things that you have to look at are who do you know that use computers that may be able to help you, and what's their availability. Also, what applications are you using? If you're using something like Design Space, which is available in a browser, it's available on both platforms, um, you may consider Mac because in the crafting community, I believe that the uh, percentage of computers being used by you know, that are Macs is probably greater. It might be as much as 15 or 20 percent already. Um, but um, you know, you like I said, I think one of the key things is figuring out where you're going to get your support from and you know who's going to help you and who's going to be available to help you and who knows how to really use the computers. I will say that out of all the um, uh, Mac users that are out there, um, my experience has been that not a lot, of, you know, there's a smaller percentage of Mac users that really know how to use a computer versus the percentage of users who use Windows who really know how to use a computer because for decades now they've used Windows at work and on other things and that, that's made a, an, an impact on people just being able to use it for general things. Now when it comes to uh, learning the computer, um, you know one of the things about Mac is they have some great resources and they have a lot of free classes. <coughs> Excuse me. And I believe they have some uh, things in their stores where you can pay, uh, you know, it's not very much. Uh, from what I recall, someone telling me it was something like a hundred bucks for a year or something. I, you know, I don't know what it is, but you can pay for classes and go in and get instruction on them. And if you're going to buy a computer that you're going to spend a thousand dollars minimum for, maybe twelve hundred, fifteen hundred dollars, then I think you should probably consider paying that extra hundred or two hundred bucks or whatever to learn how to use it well and take advantage of that I mean to, to be able to just navigate around a computer well it makes a big difference in how you use it I see a lot of people having this problem with design space uh, since they they introduced a new Cricut bridge plug-in uh, a couple months ago and uh, most of it's just because they don't know how to go to the launch pad and, and launch the icon and it's a very basic uh, skill to have and and to understand what that is so um, you know taking the time to learn it and paying that extra couple hundred bucks for lessons or whatever it could go a long way um, on you know there's resources out there on YouTube there are tons of things online like lynda.com where you can learn the operating system and the applications uh, and learn how to navigate and, and use things and troubleshoot things very basic stuff folks uh, you take the time to go do some of it. I know you, you know, a lot of people think that they, they just don't do it because they don't want to. But in order, and, and then they complain that they're frustrated with different programs or hardware or whatever. And it really comes down to they didn't take the time to learn the basics of how to use it, the computer. Now, when it comes to uh, Windows resources, there's, you know, an abundance, millions and millions of people who can help with the basics on the, on those things and uh, certainly a lot more uh, IT professionals like myself out there who can uh, provide that support and guidance 
uh, quick answers and things but then again the same thing comes to down to learning how to navigate and use the basics of your computer and understanding things I have a few videos on my channel uh, in, an, in another playlist for computer basics that teach you some of the basic things that you really need to know and how to, to use and get around and uh, people don't really take advantage of those free resources that are out there to help them uh, be able to use use the computer when it comes to uh, the choice between the two uh, one of the things that really bothers me is a lot of people will buy a Windows laptop they'll buy a $250 laptop from Walmart they'll fight with it for three or four years poor performance uh, you know just not being able to use it excuse me got some kind of trying to do this outside and it's summertime so uh, bugs are buzzing my head there um, but um, a lot of people buy these cheap laptops and cheap computers and then three or four years later they complain 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 then they finally get fed up and they say I've had it I'm switching to a Mac I'm going to invest in a Mac and then they'll go uh, I think the if you look at Apple's website right now the cheapest MacBook on there is something like 1300 bucks so you know I look at it and say if you are switching just because you have problems and you're fed up with your device what do you think your experience might have been if you just spent thirteen hundred dollars on a Windows computer um, and learn how to use it properly and how to keep uh, it running well um, heck if you just spent seven hundred dollars on a Windows computer in most cases you're going to get the equivalent hardware machine and quality that you're going to get on a Mac uh, with Windows um, you know people like to knock Windows and, and a lot of different things but I will say that Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows 8, and Windows 10, like them or not for the interface design and changes, they work very well. I mean, there, there's nothing wrong with Windows 8.1 as far as I'm concerned. I've used it for, for three years since it first came out. And uh, I've, I'm typically a slow adopter of new technology, even being an IT professional. Um, but there was nothing wrong with Windows 8.1. Now, Windows Vista was a joke. Uh, it should have never been released. Uh, but uh, sometimes there's a you know, bad apple in the bunch, I guess. And uh, Microsoft made a mistake with that. And uh, it wasn't out real long before Windows 7 came out and corrected a lot of the problems with it. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people still trying to use Windows Vista. And uh, they really need to get rid of it and get past it and, and replace that machine. and and uh, or find out if they can upgrade it to, to Windows 7, 8, or 10. Um, but uh, you know, Windows Vista should have never been released. Aside from that, everything from Windows XP and up has it, been pretty stable. Uh, people can say what they want about security issues. The bulk of security issues are caused by users, not by the operating system. And uh, you know, there are things with different browsers that may allow you to easier it may, may make it easier for you to click on something that will install a virus but the bottom line is the user still did it it, it doesn't just happen on its own so um and uh so you know when you come to the the decision buying a mac or a pc weigh those factors in who's going to support you how much support do you have around you do you live in uh you know out you know in the country somewhere and Montana or, or wherever where you have you know very little population and everybody around you is a Windows user and you might be the only person within 500 mile radius that has a Mac and not even be able to get any help with it uh, or you know get it worked on or something uh, you know if you if you live somewhere like that and you go to Chicago and go to a Mac store and buy it and take it home who's going to help you once you get home um, you know what are you doing with it is it going to be used for work? You know, a good friend of mine bought a, a MacBook a couple of years ago, and uh, he's a, a program manager for a software company that writes Windows-based software. And he, you know, raved about it for a few months about how much he loved it. He still says he loves it, but he had to get rid of it and get it, get his Windows PC back because he couldn't he couldn't work. He couldn't use the things he needed to be able to use for work. So if you're doing things like that, and you might be very limited on it. You know that's that's going to weigh into it uh, for you on, on top of everything else. You know, if it was me, you know, if my kids or my parents or my wife 
you know, ask me, you know, should we get a mic? I tell them no. Um, I, I can't support them. I'm not going to support it. I have no reason to support it. I can do so much more on Windows PC than I can on a mic. That's just me. Um, but, um, you know, really think about what you're doing with it. Um, if you're looking at uh, a $300 Windows laptop versus a $1,300 Mac computer, you're not, no pun intended, you're not comparing apples to apples here. Uh, so uh, take your time to look for a good, if, if you're really on the fence, you really want to stay with Windows just to, to not have to deal with the change, take your time and look for a good Windows computer. Go to Tiger Direct. Filter on uh, you know i5 and i7 processors. Get, try to get eight or 12 gigabytes of RAM. Um, you know if you can afford it, go with a solid state hard drive. Performance difference is amazing on a solid state hard drive. They're more expensive for equivalent amounts of storage. The problem f with consumerism of, of IT is that they put things in like a one terabyte hard drive. Unless you're doing a lot of music or videos and, and uh, things like that you don't need all that storage my laptop has a 256 gigabyte um, hard drive in it and uh, my PC has a one terabyte hard drive actually it has two terabyte hard drive I think and that's where I store all my data at my laptop is used for portability and to take things with me on the road and, and to do things like that so I know not everyone's going to have a PC and a laptop but you can get a laptop with a smaller solid state hard drive like a 256 um, and uh, get an external hard drive to store all your additional data on if that's what you, you really if you really need that much storage space you can get a little uh, one terabyte hard drive for well less than a hundred bucks probably and plug it in by USB and store your data on that and uh, and go for that performance with the solid state hard drive uh, you know I, I my laptop's five years old or five and a half years old I upgraded it to eight gigabytes of RAM it's an i5 processor. I think it's i5-520M or something like that. and uh, Or maybe an M520. And um, I put a 256-gig solid-seat hard drive in it. And it's faster than most laptops that you can buy now with an i5 or an i7 that has a regular hard drive in it. It's five and a half years old. It's blazing fast. It boots up in 10 seconds. When I log on, it takes another 10 seconds for everything to be loaded and I can use it. There's no more... Uh, what I call the cup of coffee login, where you uh, turn it on, log in, and you go get a cup of coffee, and by the time you come back, it's it might it might be ready to use. So, um, you know, be thinking about um, you know performance and things like that because uh, if you're going to get a Windows PC, you know, buying these two or three hundred dollar things at Walmart, I, I don't recommend it. Um, you're going to be more prone to issues, performance issues, things like that later on. And then, like I said, if you're going to get frustrated and reach a point where you get uh, fed up with it and go invest in a $1,500 Mac, you know, why don't you just invest seven or $800 to begin with? That, that's just my opinion. So, um, like I said, I, I you know, warned you at the beginning of this video, I was going to ramble a little bit about some of the stuff because you know, it's a tough choice sometimes and it's tough to follow uh, you know, advice of people out there because uh, people have done these things and bought them and they like them and they give advice say oh I love mine but they don't really use it a lot they don't you know maybe get put in situations where they might have to make that choice of being able to use it for work or not um, you know things like that you might get a mic uh, if you're doing something like working from home doing medical billing uh, like a lot of people do and you have a mic you may not even be able to use it uh, you know to connect to the corporate VPN uh, to use with a Citrix client or something like that. I don't know. I, I'm just throwing out things that that you may run into like my friend did where he just couldn't use some of the Functionality that he had to have on Windows on a Mac even though he loved his Mac. I have a Chromebook as well um, I love my Chromebook. It's great. It's handy. I turn it on. It's turned on and ready to use in five seconds Kind of like a tablet. I'm not a tablet guy by the way uh, I like the keyboard and, and being able to, to set and use it but uh, you know I'm limited on it I can't use design space on it I can't do a lot of things but I'm a Google services user I use Gmail a lot and things like that and of course YouTube and and all of those things work great on it so it's real handy for me to come outside by the fire pit and uh, set at night and surf or, or whatever I want to do if I'm going to really work I gotta have my Windows PC um, so 
hopefully that helps you out a little bit and gives you some of my perspective on uh, you know the Mac versus PC thing. Yeah, you know, like I said, I'm not the best person to ask sometimes on buying advice unless I've actually used something and I can say yes, I do or do not recommend it. But um, what I'll say is, um, you know, Macs are gaining market share. They're going to become a lot more prevalent in the next, uh, you know, five to ten years, uh, unless they really screw up like they did, in, you know, back in the early '90s. But um, I don't think that's going to happen. I think they've you know, put their foothold in the market with iPhones and iPads and getting in the consumers lives and so um, that's going to have a big impact on it. I'm going to have to start learning them soon because I'm starting to see them more and more at work than what I used to. Uh, in the last four or five years I, I've really started to see a proliferation of Macs and businesses as far as uh, it starts usually starts with the CEO of the company wanting a Mac uh, because he all he does is web browsing and email. He doesn't use a lot of the applications that uh, his workers use who have to have Windows PCs. Uh, more and more applications are going to the cloud, uh, things like that. So uh, the, the convergence is not happening the way I thought it necessarily would, but it's happening and it's going to be uh, a lot more prevalent, like I said, in the next five or ten years. And that's when you know the, I think Max will have a much stronger foothold. Microsoft's always going to be around, man. I mean, there's, there's, the company still does things well for corporate America, and uh, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I, I, like I said, I can do much more on a Windows PC than I can a Mac. But um, that's just me. I'm an IT professional. I got to have utilities and tools to to do what I have to do. But um, you know, weigh these things into consideration. Think about. You know who's going to support you, what you're going to use it for, what you have to use it for, what you might have to use it for later on. Uh, the worst thing would be to buy something and then a year from now have a $1,500 laptop laying in, on a table for only using it for design space when everything else you have to use is going to be on a Windows PC when you could have easily spent seven or $800 on a Windows PC. Uh, you know, that's just my perspective. So hopefully that's been helpful to you. and. Uh, like I said, I apologize for the rambling, but I, I thought this was something that a lot of people might want to hear, just hear my thoughts on and, and uh, think about, you know, the different things that run through my mind when it comes to the, the Mac versus PC debate. If my video has been helpful to you, please subscribe to my channel. And after you subscribe, be sure to click the little gear and check this box so that you'll receive an email notification when I upload a new video. You can also help support my channel by making a small donation on patreon.com slash Troy Young.